this is Chelsea from Paper Rock Geo Studio and this is part two of the art journal that I made for a gift this year for Christmas and a lot of people had been asking how to make a journal because I used a journal that I had made for the Nano Gemo videos which there was a lot of them so this this part of the I guess series is showing you how to make your own journal and I'm not going to fill this one with jelly prints I'm just going to use plain white paper but the process is exactly the same it's just instead of paper you would use your double-sided jelly prints so the first thing that you do is you get yourself a, a recycled box I, I was saying in the other video that it's a cereal box which I, I used for my other journal this one's actually cocoa and you just open up the box and cut off the excess flaps and then make sure that all your your flaps are really squished down with the bone folder so that they fold over easily and then you can cut off the edges at a diagonal of each flap so that they don't overlap when you are going to glue them into the inside make sure there's no extra pieces of glue or pieces of paper sticking out because all that will show underneath the covering. I like to use tacky glue for this. I think it's, it becomes tacky very quickly. It's, it's a lot easier than any other glue that I've ever used, but I'm sure other people use, you know, a PVA glue or, or any kind of a liquid glue would probably work or even a gel medium. It would just probably take a little bit longer for it to stick. I also like to use my bone folder to press it down to make sure that there are no bumps or air pockets. I want it to be nice and flat. And that, that sometimes makes glue squish out the edges and you just, you just, you know, scoop it up with your finger. Also I put a little bit of glue under the two flaps that are on the spine. I should have used the other side of the box for the spine, but I haven't done this in a while, so I didn't quite think it out so it's not a big deal it's just basically making a book type cover out of a box now these are the jelly prints that you saw me make in part one of this video series and what I'm doing is measuring how big the cover is and for the first part I'm going to be making a piece that lines up with the edge of where the spine folds but then is half an inch all the way around extra on the edges so you just make it an inch bigger than the measurement and then I'm going to glue that down with my tacky glue and with tacky glue or hot glue you might need to press I usually just like smear the glue down like you see me doing so that there aren't any ridges because if you just push it down it may not get every single bump out so I do that before it also helps it get tacky faster and then I just put my paper on and and um, rub it down I'm cutting my paper with a guillotine cutter that is sitting behind me that you can't see so that's how come there keeps being like little blank spots <laughs> where nothing is happening because I'm turning around to cut the paper I like my guillotine cutter best of any of my paper cutters. I have a trimmer and I have a rotary one, but I prefer that one. Now I'm using my bone folder to score the edges all the way around because I'm going to be folding those flaps in and then I'm folding and pressing them with the bone folder. I really want them to be well creased and folded so that they don't resist when I'm gluing them down. You know, they don't try to keep popping back up and making me mad. <laughs> Also, I cut off the edges at, a, at an angle. I cut off the little triangle edges so that there isn't any overlap. And I'm just gluing them down. I'm getting glue all over my fingers, but it doesn't matter. It just rolls off. <laughs> and I'm also using my bone folder to press down these flaps as well. I'm 
Okay, so there's the front and back of my book. Now I'm going to do the insides. Now for the inside cover, I want to go from the middle of the spine all the way to the edge, but I want to trim it slightly smaller so that it's not right up to the edge where it would like get caught and try to peel. So I'm just, I'm making it a, probably about a half an inch, I'm guessing, smaller so that it's about a quarter inch on each side. And then I'm just going to glue those down. So this is covering the spine on the inside and giving it a little bit of extra um, weight. And then I will be doing other things that will help the spine because I'm going to be sewing into it. So. I really like that teal and brown one. That's really cool. <laughs> I think I mentioned on my other video that I'm in a teal and brown phase. Okay, now I'm taking the bone folder and scoring the insides of the spine where they fold just to make it. You want everything to be really loosey-goosey and able to fold easily. Now this is an optional thing that I did on this one that you certainly don't need to do. I didn't do it on my, gel my jelly printed one before that has all the jelly prints and pages inside. I just cut two inch squares and, and this is a metallic one-sided metal one side metallic copper and this is cardstock but it's very very lightweight and it also will show the glue lines if you don't smear and I cut a two inch square and then I fold them corner to corner on each side and then cut out one of the triangles and then I've just pushed that down on the corner and fold and glue down the flaps on the inside and that's just going to protect the corner and it's just really it's even pretty much decorative and then I have a baby wipe there that I'm using to kind of because it's a metallic I don't want any extra glue to be on it because it'll dull it so I'm pressing it down and wiping any excess glue off so I did this on all four, four corners of this book but it's 100% optional it's not something you have to do by any means it was just for fun because I am going to be using that copper to cover the spine at the end too because I wanted it to look kind of like a fancy book. So there's the corners. Okay, now we're going to make signatures. I don't know why they're called signatures. I have no idea. <laughs> but the thing that you need to remember is that you want the paper to be smaller than the inside cover of your book. So if you, if you leave it the same size, then when you fold the book shut, the edges of the signatures will show and it will annoy you. So just make sure that you make them smaller than, you'll, you'll cut them the same, just like an inch smaller than the size of the entire thing. Then you fold them in half and, you know, score them to make them nice and folded and then stack them together in sets of five. Or you could make them, you could make bigger sets, but I didn't. Now I'm making a template to make my sewing holes into the spine. So I've cut a piece of craft card stock exact size of that blue area there, which is the spine of the book. And then I'm doing fussing and measuring and, and fussing and measuring, trying to figure out how to make, I think I ended up with six sets of five and I wanted them to fit in there and it wasn't a, it wasn't divisible by three and so I was you know it took me a while but basically you're just trying to make that make them all even so you need holes across that are all even and then draw lines and um, make dots because this is going to be your template for poking the holes in the spine and also poking the holes in the folds of the signatures You want to have, for, for the way that I sew, you want to have four holes that are somewhat evenly spaced. I don't know, those aren't exactly perfect, but they're close enough. <laughs> Nobody's really going to know. Then you're going to use a pokey tool or a piercing tool, as it's probably called. 
I have one here from Stampin' Up, and there's a little self-healing mat and a little squishy mat to put under there and then a piercing tool. And I'm clipping that template to the spine with a bulldog clip so that it won't move. And then I'm just taking the piercing tool and piercing all those holes into the spine. So that's going to be where I'm going to be sewing in. I don't know why I put that away because I'm just going to get it right back out again. Very silly. <laughs> now I'm going to get some fishing line. I like to use fishing line because it's it's pretty, you, know, you can't really see it. Some people use other types of twine or ribbon or uh, that baker's twine that's the cute little twisted things. It all depends on the effect that you want. You can um, have all your sewing sewing tails on the in, on the outside and put um, put beads on them if you want. This one I'm just I, I want it all to be completely invisible. I'm going to cover it up. So I'm using this. This is 10 pound test. Um, I think it's called Fireline. I also use it for making bracelets and things and I bought it at Walmart. It's it's um, kind of flat. It's interesting, but this part I didn't. I, I, it's hard to explain. I want my tying to be on the outside, and so I'm and I'm starting in the middle, going from the outside in. I don't know if I'll be able to explain this. You just have to kind of watch, and then I go through the second the second middle hole, and go back to the outside. And then down to the bottom and get that, catch that one on the bottom. And then back out again on the middle, back in again, and then back out on the top. <laughs> it's just, you just, it's just something you have to kind of think about. But I will end up with both of my ends on the outside, on the two middle parts. I've seen charts trying to explain this and it didn't really help me. I just had to think about it. And then I just need to pull that as tight as I can and tie it as tight as I can. It would be really helpful if I had someone to hold the knot down for me, but I don't. So I'm trying to hold it myself with my little finger and then wrapping it with you know, wrapping the knot with my other fingers and I end up having to do it twice. This is probably the hardest part of the whole thing. But I want it to be nice and tight. And then once this is tied, you're going to sew in your second signature and your third and your fourth all the way across. I did have to unsew one of mine because I missed like, you know, the holes are in a line and some it's pretty easy. They're close together. It's pretty easy to go in the wrong line. So just kind of pay attention to what you're doing. All right, they're all sewed in now. And I'm going to make a cover, which I want to be slightly larger so that it folds over the front and the back. But first I'm going to put in a reinforcement piece, which is just a plain piece of cardstock that's cut the exact size. The reason I'm doing that is because the paper that I'm using to cover the spine is so thin, it would show all those bumps because it's just, it is cardstock, but it's, it's not thick. And so I wanted to put that craft piece in first. You don't have to do that if you're using something else. And then it also helps if you fold if you crease and fold the places where the spine are going to fold before you put it on, which is what I was measuring and scoring there. And then you just glue it on. Make sure that you glue down those two flaps that are going to go towards the front and back of the book really well because they're kind of covering the, the crease where all the different papers are intersecting with each other. And again, I'm using a 
I guess that now I've got a paper towel to just rub and make sure that there isn't any excess glue on that shiny paper. And then for the under flaps, you want to fold them into the inside and glue them down. It helps if you make a little cut where the folds are because sometimes the paper doesn't want to glue correctly. Also, it was a little bit too long, so I had to trim it. So this is a pretty simple process once you get it all figured out. And this is exactly how I made my jelly print journal that I used for NanoJamo, except that all the pages are jelly printed on both sides and trimmed down. Instead of putting this white paper in, which was mixed media paper from a Canson mixed media um, spiral. And to finish off the project, off camera, I put on a ribbon around the front and some copper cord just to make it pretty. And then I glued on a purple heart that was cut from one of those smaller jelly print pieces that I had in the last video. So I hope this is explaining everything and I, I hope that it's clear enough. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments and I'll try to help you. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.